Welcome to the Educational Hour with Jay Hayes, where you will learn absolutely nothing and come up with words that make absolutely zero sense. Let's flip it. What is going on everybody? Jay Hayes here, so today I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. I've been sitting on this for a long time, and not specifically for any reason. This device was reviewed about a year ago by most people, and it's one of those devices that almost make you scratch your head back when it was made. However, we've seen something recent come out with the same type of deal with the coils and building the cotton up, up in the air and through the tank the fancier RDA, RDTA, RTA. Give you a little bit of clarification. A lot of people don't really understand the differences between an RDTA and an RTA. Let me break it down for you. So an RTA is a rebuildable tank atomizer. Technically, even an RDTA would be an RTA. RBA would be rebuildable base atomizer. Then you have an RDTA, rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Again, this could fall into a lot of different categories. Anything that has a tank on the top and the coils down low is usually an RTA, just because that's what we're typically used to seeing. However, the Titan by, um, The Aroma Miser Titan, I can't remember. Steam Crave, you sons of bitches. The Steam Crave Aroma Miser, they actually consider an RDTA. Most people would not consider that an RDTA. They would consider an RTA, just because you have the coils on the bottom, juice on the top. When you have a tank that is that large, gravity really plays a role. Because there's so much juice on the top, it's so heavy, it's weighing down on those wicks, and it'll wick really, really nice and that's where this comes in. In theory, on paper, and by drawing, this is gonna look like the most marquee way of building an RTA. It does come at a cost, though. It's also not the first one. This device right here, again, is a year old. I have a tank that's actually older than that, that's high-end, built just in the same, just with two ports, and that's the Vapor Giant. Kronos. This thing, when I first got it, was so difficult to find because no one in the States had it. Everybody was talking about the uh, the large, the V5, then now you have the V5S, the V4, the V3. Now this is the first time I'm using this and I really, really wanted to do this as a preview because of the way you build this. I could build RTAs. I could do them all day with no problem, no leaking whatsoever. It's when you have situations like this, with this kind of innovation, although it's not really innovative because it's been done before, that really make me scratch my head and wonder if I could do it properly the first time and really go for it. Lichtenstein? Lichtenstein. Huh, it's related indirectly to Frankenstein. That's where this is made. I could have swore that Vapor Giant was Italian. Um, I don't know what that little, little place is, but it's next to Switzerland, Germany, France. Whatever this one is, this one that it's inside of. Hmm. Okay, well, it's definitely not Italian. That's unique. I didn't know that. I really, I would really like to dig into that a little bit more. Because I was under the impression that Vapor Giant was based out of Milan. Yes, I just looked up the address that they have, and it says... Austria. Austria. Well, that's pretty cool. There's, there's a very famous person that was born in Austria. I'm not going to give that away. I'm going to leave that one open in the window. But that bike behind me, KTM, is made out of Austria. This has nothing to do with the RTA we're talking about, so we're just really spitting knowledge. Welcome to the Educational Hour with Jay Hayes, where you will learn absolutely nothing and come up with words that make absolutely zero sense. However, you'll find ways to put them in your sentence on a day-to-day -day basis. That's what we're going to do. One hour. I'm going to play the whole clip in reverse and will come out with my own language. It's the same people that made the Aqua Repoot. Repoot. That's when you queef twice. You're repootin'. <laughs> Isn't Putin the guy that runs Russia? Vladimir Putin, Puntan. Kruntan. I'm gonna post a link right there for the actual reboot RTA that I did for them. So without further ado, let's bring this down. This is gonna be unique.
Got that super fast hand. Let's flip it. Helixer. Futin's Inferno. That is difficult to read, man. I don't know why they went with that choice for font, but wow. That is intense. <laughs> And then there is the display of the device, support pack, extra O-rings, tools, etc. This right here is absurd. I've seen five extra O-rings, maybe 10, maybe even like 15. This tank has about 500 different O-rings. That's not an exaggeration, you'll see. Advanced guillotine deck. I feel like they just made that up, just, just to sound cool. This has that reverse flip to Rappo Suma. Scratch and sniff. Hey, I remember that guy, the hologram. And this is platypus, flavor and scented. I'm assuming up here on some of these devices, there may be an extra glass. However, this does not come with a glass. It's just a little placeholder for a piece of glass. The tank on the bottom. This is what I was talking about, guys. Check this out. Usually when you get little peripheral pouches, they come in like little tiny Ziploc baggies. Well, not so much here. They must have been making a sandwich maybe filling up their kid's lunch bag or something, and this is what was left over after they put their mayonnaise and ketchup sandwich together. You got this baggie. So inside this bag is another bag, and then inside that bag is about 50 other bags. I have no idea why there are so many O-rings, and you think that would be enough. Nope, here's another bag. <laughs> There's no words for this at all o-rings all over the place some extra post screws and then you get a jig over here an allen key and some more post screws there's a lot of accessories with this and they're not even like good accessories it's it's not like you would need any of these very awkward situation down here with this airflow and it is a little bit difficult to adjust on the top you're gonna have a 510 drip tip pull that out to fill this up you're gonna take this delrin cap off and then that's how you're gonna fill it down here on the bottom what you have is four portholes those four portholes is how this is going to wick properly they are adjustable however it's a little difficult to see by looking at the side of it whether or not they're open or closed on the bottom for the deck this piece spins however when you turn this all the way to the right what happens is you open up all those ports you cannot remove this now that's lining up those two notches you go in the center that's opening up your airflow you go all the way to the left that closes the airflow and allows you to pop it out. Very unique. This insert right here, you're gonna need to get out. I would not recommend you to leave this in just because that's gonna make it that much more difficult to build on this. If you don't pull this out, you can still build on it. It's just very, very difficult. We're gonna put a coil right here and then the cotton is gonna go on the top. I'm used to building on something very, very similar to this. Kronos. This is very similar to the Helixer. However, this came out many, many, many months before the Helixer did. A flat deck, it shows you where the coil is going to be. And then you have a notch cut out right there for this nipple on the base. But do you see the little ports on the inside? That's not for the screws. That's where your cotton goes. There's a big difference between the Kronos and the Helixer. To build the Kronos, you have to put the coil in, make the cotton really long, and then you have to feed it through these. You don't have an adapter like you do on the Helixer. That's not saying that this is going to be any easier. It just makes it that much more convenient. Once you put the coil in, you can separate this whole bottom piece right here, and then that allows you to put the cotton through. It's a very, very, very difficult build scenario. And then there you go. Put the coil in, you put the cotton, you feed it through, then you place this down, then you screw this back on. This is top fill just like that is. However, I would say that this is much more difficult to build. I have not built on the Helixer though, so I guess we're gonna find that out. The machining on this is not very good at all. It's very, very cheap feeling. Edges are a little jagged, not sanded down. Post points are very awkward. You have a top mount screw and a side mount screw. A lot of people said that I was gonna hate this device because of how difficult it is to build on. Let's see. All right, so we're gonna be putting this as 26 with 36 on the outside. Threading isn't horrible, sounds like shit though. Ooh, that is rough. I'm sorry, that sounds bad. Oh my goodness. Not like it's rough, it just doesn't sound very good.
You could tell by looking at this that this is all lined up good. It's not bad at all. But what I'm gonna try to do is just get a little bit of cotton to come up right past that weird O-ring. One problem you may run into if you do make the tails too long and you do twist this, it may jack up that cotton and kind of grind it out a little bit. Put some juice in here. We're not gonna put a lot just because it makes me nervous as hell. There we go. That is the Helixer by Futon. Let's bring it on the top. Back on top of the Helixer by Futon, sitting on top of the Oceanus. Now this is going to be a throwback video just be This is going to be a fu a Futon. <laughs> it's good, did you go to the local mattress store and pick up your Futon? What are they called again? Futon! We're sitting on top of the Inakin Oceanus. If you haven't seen the review for that guy, I'll post a link right there. So, uh, listen, real simple build. 3.6, well, I don't know about simple. It was a fuse Clapton, dual 26, 36, you know, my jammies. 3.6 volts. 3.6 volts is really, really low for an 18650, so we're kind of using this as if it was a mech mod. 0.27 build, let me show you some vapor reduction. Oh, no leaking. And you can see as much as I've been hitting that, it's pretty damn empty. Let me fill it up again. Oh. Let me fill this up again. I'm not quite sure as to why they went with Delrin over stainless steel, maybe just to reduce the heat, since this does maintain a lot of heat, but on the same token, maybe that's why they put those fins in there, is to dissipate the heat quicker. It's going to get a little spicy, and that's because of how close your coils are to the airflow, respectively speaking. There is a way to control the airflow on this, and that's with those little notches. If you go too far, you're going to unlock the deck, and then, well, that's gonna be a messy situation. But let's just fill this up a little bit more. I don't wanna go crazy. Keep in mind, this is the first time that I built this. I've never built this one. Wow. It's very, very cheap feeling, the metal that they use to make this tank. However, it's innovative in a sense. It's using four ports versus the two on the Kronos. Unlike the original Kronos, the Kronos only had two ports and it was very, very difficult to get that to wick properly. You really had to dismantle the whole thing. This is not designed to be taken apart once you put it together. Once you put it together, you fill it up, you're good to go. If something goes wrong with the build, you have to make sure that it's an empty tank. If there's juice in there and you crack that, it's going to leak everywhere. I don't know if that's necessarily a flaw in the design as it is just a flaw in the whole RTA. Because something like this people are not going to be interested in. Every review that you see of the fancier RDTA, I'd say 90% of those people don't like it. They thought it was junk, they thought it looked shitty. Maybe this whole design has to look shitty unless it's high end. So it's been sitting this whole time, still the same amount of juice in it. Dude, I don't know, that is a lot of flavor. Like, that is a lot of flavor. The amount of flavor I'm getting out of this tank, holy cow. It'd be rough in saying that it's one of the best, but I am gonna tell you that the flavor is absolutely phenomenal. And normally I don't give ratings on throwback videos. There's not much of a point. It's an older device, there's really no need, no one really cares about the rating. Some people don't even care about ratings in general, but, but, this is no exception. I'm not gonna give it a rating. Ryan customer. This isn't something that someone would buy and be like, oh, let me use this because this is different and it just works well. Not the case. There's a lot of flaws with it. The ultim situation, learning how to do builds correctly to where the wicking is proper because if you don't get this right, let me give you a really good reference point. You put a build in this. Everything looks good to go. Okay, that's fine. You put the cap on. You fill up the juice. You sit in there for 10 seconds and this thing starts to pour out liquid. What do you do? You take apart the bottom. Now you even lost more juice. Or if you don't build it correctly, you're gonna get juice everywhere. I, however, got really lucky on the first time. Again, it probably helps because I don't know how to do builds. You know, just like everybody said, Jay, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You're just putting shit together. Okay, well, I guess that's what works. What do you think I would rate this as? If I was to rate it on a zero to 10, based off the amount of flavor, the build complexity, what would be the rating? If you said this, you're incorrect. If you said this, you're incorrect. That is the rating. Was that cool? Should we do that more often? I don't feel like anybody got the purpose of that, including myself.
I don't know the difference of doing it that way. <laughs> One of those pointless things that make no sense. Like the shoes that have no shoelaces and the, the grippy things. I think they're designed for old people that can no longer tie their shoes. Either way, listen, I don't like the machining on this. I really like the flavor. There's not a whole lot about this that I do like. The flavor is giving it three to four points all by itself. I really don't recommend anybody to pick this up and I'm not quite sure you're gonna be able to find this anywhere. There may be clones out there that may be authentic. Not really sure, but the way that I got this was directly through Futin. And man, I'll tell you, I've seen some crazy shit come from that company. This isn't too far-fetched for what they've created before. I know that a lot of people are not gonna like this and I think it's awkward that a lot of people thought that I would hate a device like this. Just because something is complicated or different doesn't mean that I'm not gonna like it. That just means that I may get frustrated or pissed off. Although there's that occasional time where I don't really get so angry and then I drive around on a motorcycle with my shirt off and my boxers running over RDTAs. I'll tell you what, this functions a whole lot better than that other one, and I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.